Saturday night football and it is a big and Robert Walls. It's arch enemies Essendon versus Carlton and so much to play for. Absolutely quarters. Uh, look Carlton's been down in recent weeks. Essendon's been up. Uh, Carlton's above Essendon on the ladder. They had a draw when they played they earlier in the year. Uh, not much between the two teams. Even if you consider a hundred years of football. Uh, check the stats this week and I think uh, there's only eight games separating them so it'll be a close one again I'm sure. No Watson again. Hocking's a big out and no Fletcher a late withdrawal. That hurts them badly. It does. Fletcher's their best defender and uh, they will miss him. Also Hocking and Watson as you mentioned their best clearance players. They'll be hoping that Monfries and Zaha Rakas can step up in the midfield as they did last week in the second half. I guess we can't have pretty heavy reliance on their small forwards. They really need to fire tonight. They do. Uh, when Garlett and Eddie Betch play well, Carlton generally win. Uh, so they're amongst their leading goal kickers. Also Walker, who's been playing really well in the forward line. Those three need to have good nights. I'm tipping the Blue Daggers by about three goals. I'm going for Carlton by three or four goals. Stakes are high. And we're ready to go on a very chilly Saturday night at the MCG. Hill the tap. Elkshams wrapped up by Judd. Right. Well, so I'll just look at the midfield of Essendon at that first bounce. You're used to seeing Hocking and Watson, and it's Howlett and Melsham, so young bodies. Be interesting to see how they cope against Judd and the senior Carlton players. Here's Stanton. Quick kick out of the pack. Ineffective one. Fisted away by Digan. First clear possession going to Bombers' way. Monfrey's two, Zaharakis, so those two stars of last week combining there. But the kick's cut off on defensive 50 by Laidler. Giving to Henderson, who looks as though he's making a life for himself down the back now for the Blues. And Gibbs playing well forward for Carlton. Not much there for the Blues, and it's out to the boundary for a throw-in. There's Jake Carlisle. He started in defence, played a lot. Of, he's, he's only played three senior games, and they were all forward, so he's got the job there. Picking up way to me. Here's Warnock. Fed out the ball. Now Robinson off to Judd. And shows some acceleration as he kicks the ball towards Betts. Magnificent kick by Judd. And that was an easy one for Eddie. Yes, uh, a fast break off the wing. And he had plenty of time to seize. Uh, we'll have a look at his options. And you can see that uh, Eddie Betts fast on the lead. The thing about Eddie Betts, for a small player, he's very good overhead. Kicked 29 goals this year, 29-16, so he has been accurate. Converting at 64%. It's home. So, nice start for Eddie Betts. One of the... Most dangerous small forwards in the comp. We saw Stephen Milne knocking home eight goals last night. I wonder if uh, Eddie will be inspired to do similar tonight. Experienced Ben Howlett is playing on Chris Judd. He should be goal side of Chris Judd. We let it go. He just gives him too much space. Uh, the, the clearance rolls on. He loses sight of Chris Judd, and that's all Chris Judd needs, and he sets up a goal. And in the drawn game in round four, Hocking, Lonigan, and Watson had Judd for more than half the contest. Not one of the three playing tonight. Problem for the Bombers. Howlett in head over the ball with Robinson coming the other way. It was Extreme bravery and he's paid Crazy. for it. Ben Hill, it's free. Climb on. Two. Wobbly on his legs. Well, ben. both players showed super courage. Well, Complete Angus. disregard Angus. for their own safety Angus. there. Angus Montfries, he take the kick. He's gone. He Howlett. is on he jelly is. legs. Oh, you wouldn't think he'd play much further part in the game, Tim. Well, you'd hope he's just stunned and not concussed. We'll find out more shortly how he'll be all over it. Bombers only going a few metres. Carlton looking to apply pressure. No Fletcher. Howlett may be out of the game early on. Bit like last time with those two knee injuries. Carlton's footy again. This man, a real key for the Blues. Digan to Simpson in his 150th. Beautifully placed ball for Garlett to run in and kick the goal. And the Blues have made a flying start here. That was clinical. Perfect 
delivery from Simpson and Garlett running on and doing the rest. And in that collision, Tim, uh, Mitch Robinson's also gone off with it, what seems to be quite a nasty arm injury. I did see him grab for that arm quarters, is spot on, and what a build up from Carlton. And the ramifications of those two players, Ben Howlett was subbed off last week with a hip injury and now a serious concussion. We see Robinson come off, but Cade Simpson, he's the player you want with the foot in his hands. You cannot get better delivery than that. And a good finish from Garlett, who's got Henry Slattery opposed to him. We said pre-game, Matty, that uh, Carlton needed their two little fellas up forward to be important players. Both of them enjoyed playing on the bigger MCG. They'd much prefer to play here than at Etihad Stadium. So dream start for Carlton with Betts, Garlett goaling. Bombers work it to the 50. Here's Cramery. Beautiful pick up by Simpson. And he kicks it out to Murphy. Didn't get a good bounce. Stanton's there. Clever little tap. Off to Prismal. Back to Stanton. And he measures the kick. Looks for Davey. Spoil at the last minute by Yaron. And it's a free kick for it in the back and it's going to go to Cramery. Just a tad too far out to score. He's a big kick. It'll be about 70 out and he shorts it. And Zaharakis has chipped in to take the mark and be kicking from about 48 metres out. Well, he's been a good goal kicker, accurate goal kicker. And uh, I reckon last week was fantastic for him, uh, Matty, to have that second half where he really just about won the game single-handedly for the Bombers. He's converting 64% this year, Zaharakis, towards goal. It is good enough. Just a really smart kick there from Stuart Cameron. Uh, a good duel this with Layla. Layla won the first two contests, but poor checking there from Carlton. Gave Zaharakis far too much room. He hasn't been a great set shot kick this year, so that's a brilliant finish early in the match. Good news for Carlton fans, Mitch Robertson, just a bit of strapping on the wrist, he's back out there. Howlett is down in the rooms at the moment with the docks. Keep an eye out for Kyle Remus, he's the sub for the Bombers tonight. So two goals to one the Blues way on this cold Melbourne night. Warmed no doubt by a contest between these great rivals. Myers, the late inclusion for Fletcher working at Ford. Kerno in the way for the Blues. Murphy taking them on, drawing them to him. Giving to Scotland, out in front of Davies, pressure from Jetta. Tui in there for Carlton, near the line and over. This last clearance, Rob, in the centre bounce was David Myers and Dyson Heppel. So they're having to run players through the midfield which haven't played there all year, such as their injury crisis in the midfield. Warnock, get it out to Judd, who gives it to Scotland. Uh, this is an ambitious kick. Yaron against Davey, two speedsters. Yaron is good enough. Great one-on-one -on -one battle. He now kicks to half forward. And Gibbs can't quite get there in time. Matty, you're happy with uh, Michael Hurley playing up forward? I think it's a good move considering the, the smalls of Carlton in the forward line. And he does straighten them up. They look far better when Hurley's in the forward line. In saying that, though, Rob, I think his future, I think he's a better backman. So I think when Dustin Fletcher eventually retires, that they've got arguably the best centre-half back full-back combination in, in pairs and Michael Hurley. So Henderson against Hurley. Umpire Nichols with the footy high bouncer of the ball. He is amazing. Ruckman have to wait under it a long time. And again, big pack around the football. I heard the geesh talking. Timmy said he was bouncing it too high. Well, it's possible that he does, really. I don't know what he can do about it. He just gets the timing and the contact perfect. Hill getting the tap. Murphy had it. Besieged. Robinson getting in and under. Carlton fans say he was pushed in the back. Bomber fans say he was holding onto it. He comes up with a free kick for high contact. He was making the play. He launches it long. Walker set himself from behind. Toomey there as well for Carlton and Gibbs. A lot of bomber defenders too. And they tie it up. Close the Blues down.
Warnock. Tapped it straight to his uh, opposition number in Hill, who gave it off to Prismal. To half-back Thornton's there. So is Davies. Now Armfield. Back to Robinson. Big game tackle by a couple of bombers, including Hurley. Heppel. What a season he's had in his rookie year. Hurley again to Collier. Gibbs playing deep forward for Carlton, slattery on him. Is that a worry with high ball coming in? Oh, he's, he's a really good competitor and he's just a shutdown player. So I think he's a good matchup for Gibbs because he doesn't win a lot of footy himself, Henry Slattery. Dewey, the famous number 42 for Carlton, kicks it forward. Now McVeigh, his handball smothered. Dyson. Myers tackled by Judd. We'll have a bounce just outside Carlton's attacking 50. Yeah, I'd worry for Henry Slattery on the quicker players in Betts and Garlett, so I think that is probably the best matchup to go with at the moment, was it? I think he might have started on Garlett and uh, there's been a, a change already. Here's Kerno for the Blues. Funny hand pass stolen by Hill to Myers, to Zaharakis. Bombers have only been into the 50 once and they've achieved maximum efficiency with uh, one goal. Poor kick, Judd was able to get his hands onto the footy. Davies has got it, but coughs it up. Zaharakis, Davies fought back well. Now the Bombers can work it forward, and uh, Hill trying to get to the drop, Davies too. So they're inside the 50 again. Missed the target there, Prismal, and David Hill, he's a great runner for his size, but hasn't really shown that this year. Really low on confidence, but he blew Robbie Warnock up in that run. From the side, Warnock tapped it down. Thanks, Travis. Thanks, Hill got the tap. Here's Murphy through traffic. And he got a free kick for a high tackle. In the back pocket. And he's going to switch over to the members' side. The lead has been provided. And the mark is taken by Garlett, who goes down the line. Shocking kick, bad turnover. Mark taken by Carlisle, playing his fourth game for the Bombers. Three, played the last three games of last season. This is his first game for 2011. Heppel measures the kick to beauty. And the mark is taken by Cramery well within range. Good usage of the football base and going forward. Oh, he's a class act, Dyson Heppel. Rarely waste a disposal and a lot of talk about him. Could a player in his first season win a best and fairest? And he, he could be on track for that. Stuart Cramery. 28 goals this season, make it 29. So two goals apiece to start this match, and here's Heppel. Beautiful left foot kick straight down the throat of Stuart Cramery. Who yeah. just didn't seem to have an opponent. Uh, Garlett was the man nearest him, and he yeah. got back from the front half. Laidler has been playing on him. Kyle Remus continues to bide his time on the bench. Benny Howlett now back up on deck doing a few run-throughs. So it looks like they're trying to get Howlett back into the game. Good news for the Bombers. Laidler started on uh, Cramery. Now Digan has the job. Bombers found their way through Carlton's rather shaky back half very easily then. Uh, holding the ball Carlton's way. Cruiser to take it. So two goals apiece after the Blues scored... A couple very early. Long ball here, but Judd's caught behind. Not apparently expecting that placement. And Hardigan was able to lead him to the ball. Zaharakis, mown down by Toomey. Coughs it up to Gibbs. Over the top to Walker, who can go back and from close in, line them up. And he has been as good a set shooter as there is in the competition this year with 23 goals, five from the set position. We're 13 minutes in and the tackling pressure of Carlton has been fantastic. 16 tackles to Carlton, just eight to Essendon. And of those 16, four to Chris Judd. So Walker, 40 goals for the season. He adds to that tally with a precise finish for the Blues.
Well, the three danger men for Carlton, Walker, Betts and Garlett, the three who kick most of their goals without Jared Waite playing, do a lot for their confidence just to get a goal early and settle their nerves. The Blues loot at the G, three goals to two, and good to see Ben Howes just made his way back out onto the ground. And some real cheers from the Essendon supporters. Well done, and good luck from here on in. Well, that's good to see. And uh, Chris Judd having a rest, if you like, virtually at full forward for Carlton. Right, and this time that one, Gibbs puts Carlton forward. Good mark by Betts. Wants to get it moving quickly, Judd's his target. Now he's two minds, decides to go by hand to Robinson, who just throws it on the boot. To the full forward area. Judd, oh, brilliantly done to Betts. Great stuff by Judd. Smart, clever, skillful. And Eddie's got a Joe the Goose, he's got two. Well, he has got two quarters, and uh, we spoke about Chris Judd playing at full forward there. Now, that's not a mark, but he's able to get the quick handball on. And what a luxury it is, instead of having him go to the uh, interchange bench, just putting him forward. He's been down there at full forward for the last four minutes, so he's getting a nice breather but still having impact. Oh, it's fantastic, isn't it? Just having your best players stay on the ground for as long as possible and the matchup of Pears and Judd, it's going to be a beauty. And that's all thanks to the sub rule. It is. It is. And uh, this one, this is the height difference. I think Hardingham would have been the better matchup, and they're now switching David Myers over to him. Great awareness and recovery by Judd flying and maybe questioning himself as to whether he should have gone up or waited down, but uh, he did a bit of both and was able to set up the goal for Betts. Bombers win the footy here. Well done by uh, Howlett. Off to Hardingham. Now to Melksham. Clever little left football. Cramery won it skillfully. Weighted the kick well just too strongly for Jetta and Thornton sees it out. Says he did more than see it out. He took it out deliberately. The umpire not in agreement. There's a shot of Wade Toomey, uh, mature age player for Carlton, 25. His tackle on Zaha Rakas caused the uh, Carlton goal. Beautiful tap by Ryder to Hill, who gave it up with the handball. Simpson. In game 150, Warnock attacks it. Well done, big fella. Off to Cruiser. Now running onto it. Toomey, beautiful handball back to Simpson. No one home. It's a bad kick. Gee, it's a lost opportunity there for Carlton. Just didn't get enough, Hardingham. He didn't get enough elevation on the kick, Simpson, and uh, a goal goes begging. He set up an earlier goal with a beautiful kick. He wasted an opportunity for what should have been a certain goal with a poor one. Now Laidler stands in Essendon's way. It's Carlton by two goals, making the running here in the early part. Henderson takes the ball on the switch. Gets a call in short from Davies. Opts for the longer one to the one-on-one. -on -one. Monfries, Robinson with him. Zaharakis arrives. Robinson's been excellent. He's so hard. Taken the ground well. Willing contest and a ball up. I think Robinson is an unusual player in the modern game and he's the sort of player that every team would give its eye tooth for. As hard as nails. Talk about kamikaze football played by Jonathan Brown. Mitch Robinson's not far behind. He uses his head as a battering ram half the time. Matty Dyson's gone to back pocket on Eddie Betts. McVeigh off. Yeah, he had a couple of goals kicked on him in that uh, first 15 minutes. One on the lead and then it one letting Eddie Betts get out the back of him. Judd, nice pick up. Off to Simpson again. Drives it forward. And when everyone turned around, the only bloke that was looking at the football was Betts. And he's taken the mark. Robinson, not the best of kicks either. Scotland against Prismal. Plays a bit of soccer. Walker attacks it. Fed out the handball just to open space. Now Mitch Robinson has a crack at it. Can't quite pick it up. Pears. Jetta. Oh, straight through the legs of Cramery. Back to Jetta. Off to Heppel. Sweeping handball. Here's Stanton. He's got Zaharakis in support, little squeeze kicks good and finds Heppel. Held it together well then, the Bombers. It looked as though it could come unstuck at any moment. Stanton, long ball, rider from behind Henderson. It might fall for him yet. Davey lurking, 
So too Hurley, Henderson corralling him. Now Cramery just can't quite get it moving. Now they might. Collier centering, good kick, beautifully executed. Prismal is good with his feet and Ryder now can have a shot from long range. Good patient football again, Matthew. Oh, it was brilliant and across half back they didn't panic. Good chain of handball. Collier has been a real spark and Brent Prismal really used the ball well when he's got it in his hands. And Paddy Ryder, he's, he's had his ups and downs this year, but he's actually kicked quite well for goal. Kicked 20 goals, 10. It's a hard shot from 50, but he's one of the better set shots that Essendon's got. Rucking quite well in recent weeks. Had just about 50 hit outs in two games against Geelong and Richmond, but starting up front tonight from outside 50. Has it got the carry? Oh, it did have, but it was just offline. So it's the first miss of the night. The Blues lead by 11 points. Yaron to do the kicking in. A little short one. And he'll get the handball receive. Kicks out wide, looking for Robinson. He's got a couple of metres on Hardingham. Oh, beautifully done. Fantastic dummy, and he kicks to half forward. Here's Betts swooping. Kicking beautifully to half forward. Mark taken by Toomey. He plays on. Little short one. And that is well worked by Carlton. And Thornton will have the shot at goal. Just quickly move Thornton up into the forward line, Carlton. They started Thornton across the half back line, playing on Paddy Ryder. But Eddie Betts is the man at the moment. Eddie Betts is uh, red hot. Everything he touches turns to gold. I like this move because I think every goal they were getting through fast breaks. I think they need someone down there who can take a pack mark, and I think Brett Thornton's a man. Seven goals this season for Brett Thornton. He's only got a career tally of 15 in 175 oh. games, and maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so they started Matty Cruiser down there, but he looks out of touch in terms of his forward play. He's probably best running around the ground. It's Ricky Dyson in his 99th game of AFL football. Drives it long. Target is Ryder, who's forced to defend. Collier keeps it alive. And that might be out in the full, it is. It's against Milksham. And free kick going to the Carlton captain. Well, Thornton is the long option. If he can kick it long to the top of the goal square, that's the uh, chance. He does just that. In front. No mark. Here's Howlett. Recovered from that big hit early. Stanton. Campbell intercepted by Judd. Good tackle. Got to be holding the ball, and it is. Less than cheer echoes yeah. around the MCG. They loved it. And it was Howlett. Gee, it's a big crowd, too. Which is uh, no surprise, I don't suppose, but it's a cold night. It's on telly, and... Uh, you can't keep Carlton and Essendon fans away from these. Harding them out to Ryder. And that's what Ryder has to do on Warnock, is just run cover ground. He's, he's a far better athlete. He's got to use that to his advantage. Bomber fans wanting 50 for that. Digan zealous in his spoiling attempt. Zaharak is wide. Hurley leading Henderson to it. So Carlton the first two goals, the Bombers pulled them back, Carlton kicked two more and uh, Essendon looking for its next one. Hill couldn't mark it, it's worked on by Melksham, Davius beats the ball just wouldn't sit up, Melksham follows up, Jetta calling inside, Melksham leads them a merry dance, goes for Heppel, always a tall contract that one, Prismal brought down, gets the free kick. Heppel. Now it is Prismal who will take it. Not a long kick, Brent Prismal. Yeah, he's looking to give off the handball, so probably kicking from around 48 metres and it'll really test him. He's on the mark. And the man on the mark about 46 out, so he's kicking from virtually on the paint. He's having a peep in board. Yeah, Dyson's <laughs> saying, give it a move. <laughs> Betraying his lack of conviction about this. Here's the target. Not bad. Oh, why did he worry? Beautiful kick.
It's a chilly night, a Saturday night at the MCG in the middle of winter, but it is a fantastic crowd. They've come in really late here, and you'd have to say, Rob, it'd be uh, maybe even close to 80,000. Yeah, it's built up, hasn't it? And, uh, well, you've got two teams who uh, are on the rise, that's why, and well-supported, good memberships. Blues work it forward. Here's Dyson. Nice work. Hardingham. Prismal. Almost a throw against Carlisle, but umpire let that go and we'll have a bounce right on the Blues 50. One area Carlton have really improved is their tackling. 21 tackles to Essendon's 11. The kick by Slattery is ineffective. He has another go at it. And what's the umpire going to do? He's being patient. Ball eventually comes out. Picked up by McVeigh. Just bangs it as long as he possibly can. In front is Hurley no mark. Here's Henderson for Carlton. Handballs into space. Nice pick up by Collier. Well done and beautiful delivery. Bomber's dangerous. Big Hill. Man running for him. Receiving. It's Jetter. He crosses 50. He's gone inside rather than going for home. Zaharakis. Davey waiting for the hand pass. A lot of navy blue there. Judd's got to do something to get it out and does. And I reckon there'll be a ball up. There will. The heat is on. The feeling is in the air. It's right on 30 years since they played that uh, classic home and away game that Essendon won by a point from 26 down late. Hurley swings at goal. Has he come to the miracle? He has. And the Bummers are within a point. Well, that's the great advantage of Michael Hurley, just the strength of him. Pretty congested spot down there. Such an important player, Michael Hurley. Watch the strength. Henderson's doing a good job here, but lets him get goal side. Simpson probably could have smothered it, but it's a great goal there from Michael Hurley. So good on his left and right side. Cramery was terrific too with his strength getting that handball out. Carlton by a point. He'll fit it out. Here's Stanton. Head over the ball. Picked up by Scotland. Punches the handball to Murphy. He's found some space. Kicks long. Looking for Betts, he was caught behind, he might still get it and he bets. He's already got a couple, twists, turns, decides to handball to Simpson, who has to swing onto the left, screws it around the corner. Not going to make the distance into the pocket. In the end, it's a point. Carlton lead by two points. Eddie Betts, seven touches, two goals in this first quarter. And he might be lining up again, he will be, as Hardingham stabbed the ball into danger territory, and Betts picked it off. Well, just awareness of always being part of the game. He's red hot at the moment, he's been the most influential player in the game. I know uh, we're not even a quarter time, but uh, Eddie is hot. So for his third goal... And this is very kickable. The man on the mark, 25 out. And Betts makes no mistake. It's the Blues by eight points late in the turn. Two minutes or a minute 30 left on the clock. Kyle Hardingham, it's one area of his game. He's got to really work at and continue to. He's had a great year. But uh, just should have gone down the line, a really dangerous kick. And with this man in your vicinity, he makes you pay. Eddie Betts, three goals in the first quarter, eight disposals, four marks. It's be the weekend for the Tiny Titches. Eight goals to Stevie Milne last night. Three to Betts in the first quarter. Schneider with five yeah. last night. The Carlton forward line at the moment is the smallest forward setup I've ever seen in navy blue. 
Bombers on to the attack. Prismal, nice kick inside 50. That is a wonderful kick from Brent Prismal and a solid mark taken by Hurley. Really pleasing for Brent Prismal. He was lost during this year, wondering what he needs to do to get a game. They wanted a harder side to Brent Prismal. More two-way running, and he's really responded in the last month. And you can see why you want him in the side. Not many can do that on their non-preferred. Well, as far as clearances go, Matty, and we thought that Carlton would have the real edge there, it's 11-10 in Carlton's favour, but uh, that was a super effective clearance from the centre. Hurley for his second. He stabbed at it and it drifted away. To bring a sigh of relief from Carlton's defenders. Essendon have entered the 58 times and should have at least five goals. You called it early, Tim, about the Carlton defence, and you're spot on. Every time it goes down there, they look really vulnerable, and it's been the case ever since Michael Jamison went out of the team. And now they are playing a little nervously, kicking it around. Why are Essendon fans booing Chris Judd, Matthew? I think the better players get booed more often, I think. <laughs> so the second soaked up, and at quarter time, the Blues lead by seven points. So the Blues by seven points. Carlton tried to stay in the top four. Essendon trying to hang in the top eight. Big crowd at the MCG as we start the second quarter. Warnock fit out the handball. His arm field off to Scotland. Goes long and high to half forward. Underneath it was Toomey. Here's Prismal again for disposal number 11. And that's another beautiful kick. Fine Stanton. And here go the Bombers. Zaharakis, nice vision, chips it out wide, running onto his Collier, who gave it back to Stanton, handball partially smothered. Stanton trying to get it back to Collier without much success. Scotland's there for Carlson, and we'll have a bounce. Thanks so much of the modern rivalry owes to Kevin Sheedy, who brought a, I think, a fair old dislike of the Navy Blue Jumper from Richmond 30 years ago, 1981, and since then, Essendon have won 38 to 23 with three draws. Here go the Bombers again. Zaharakis into the 50, and Ryder was able to mark in front of Thornton, and he's within range. This is where the midfield battles are so important. You just feel that Carlton's forward set up, uh, it's relying on the smalls, and they're doing a good job, but down the other end, you see Ryder too big and tall for Brett Thornton, and Michael Hurley looks pretty promising on Lockie Henderson, so it can, could come down to who wins this clearances, and uh, Essendon are right in this match. So a ninth entry by the Bombers should produce their fifth goal. And it does. Been in great touch, Mike, uh, David Zaharakis, and just puts it, weights the ball perfectly for Paddy Ryder, and uh, good for his confidence as well, getting his hands on the football. Essendon midfielders have uh, risen to the challenge. Prismal, 11 disposal. Stanton, 11. Zaharakis, 9. And contested possessions, Prismal and Stanton right up there. So uh, they had to lift in the absence of Joe Watson and Heath Hocking. They're certainly doing that. That's a throw. No, it's a hold. So it's going to Chris Judd. It's a lovely tap by Warnock to Judd. Interesting quarters. I, I thought it was a throw. Yeah. And here's a replay. Cool, fine line, that one. Well, when in doubt, always give it to the dual Brownlow medalist. <laughs> Long ball by Judd. Looking for Cruiser! That's the mark. Exactly what Carlton are looking for. A big target to mark. We see Brett Thornton's now back in defence. They tried him earlier. And it's what Matty Cruz hasn't been able to do in the last month of footy. He started this, his last few weeks, his first few weeks, sorry, back after his knee really well. And that's what, a great effort on Tate Pearce. 
He did test that knee he out, did, yeah. landing there, and uh, it's a bit ginger. If he's come through that okay, it'll be a terrific tick because uh, he did land awkwardly. A cruiser from right on the 50. That's a good-looking kick. It's a beauty. Yeah, right, Robbie landed a smack bang on the knee, would have tested that scar tissue and the, oh, yeah. the ligaments, etc. And it was a strong mark and a beautiful finish. Big confidence booster. Would have loved seeing that. Tate Pears has conceded just four goals from five games this season, and that was a big grab there from Matty Cruiser. We see Bryce Gibbs in picture. He uh, he started up forward for Carlton, then went into defence. He's only had two touches for the game, so they're giving him a chance in the middle, expecting to uh, lift the tally now. Melksham just about going the wrong way there. Murphy able to put it wide. So a throw in. Sight for sore eyes for Carlton fans to see a tall forward taking a mark and kicking a goal from outside 50. And once the shock of seeing Cruiser get up, just wincing a bit from that landing had passed, it would have been all smiles for Blues fans. Here's Judd hitting it hard again. No one there to receive. Stanton for the Bombers, but surrounded. Diagon, he's surrounded too. And the Bombers prevail, or do they? against Stanton, who had no prior opportunity. He had no prior opportunity whatsoever. Warnock for Cal. Thornton, Henderson, and that defence, very shaky. Henderson to a contest. Toomey got rid of his opponent, but then couldn't position himself. Bomb a free kick. Advantage played here, Davey and Collier. Held on well. Collier keeps it moving. It's a beautiful kick to Cramery, who plays on instantly. Into the pocket to a one-on-one. -on -one. Hurley! Great grab. Too strong for Thornton. Well, this is the worry for Carlton, because this kid with the ball is very strong overhead. And, uh, gee, I'd be tempted if I was James Hurd to get all the other boys out. A little short one into the pocket. Is on the half volley to Cramery. Hurley left another, have another crack at it here. So around the corner on the right boot. Makes a good fist of it. Brilliant. It's been a long time since you've seen a right foot goal from a number 18 for the Bombers, but there was a beauty. It was a beauty. I don't know why he passed it off, because he's one of the best kicks that the league's got. But in fairness to Brett Thornton, I know he needs to go better in the one-on-one -on -one contest, but there was no one near those two for about 50 or 60 metres. And I think that's one area Carlton aren't up to scratch compared to Collingwood, Geelong, they never have second, third men up to support their <laughs> defenders. And uh, that was a great finish there from Michael Hurley. But I think the midfielders and their defenders don't help out their key tools enough. Uh, look, you, you talk about those Carl Carlton's defence is its worry. has been for a long time. And you just look at the back line. Inexperienced players. Dyke in his first year of AFL. Laidler only played about 20 games. Yaron first year playing in the back line. Henderson's never really played at fullback before, so it's a very, very inexperienced defence that the Blues have got. That's why Carlton's midfield has to really be on top in this game. Six goals from ten entries. If they keep going at that rate, on the average number of entries per game, they'll just about boot a record score. Mm. And the other Carlton defenders, two each, so the young Irishman, so if Essendon can get their fair share of the clearances and get it in quickly, that Carlton defence will really struggle to uh, to keep up. There's Gibbs for the Blues, Robinson, Digan just couldn't hold it on the right side of the line. And that's one reason why Carlton this year try to get Gibbs into the back line, try to get Scotland into the back line, get this, some experience back there. Carlton have been in 16 times for their six goals. Warnock pinching it there. Cruiser did well, didn't have a rover though. Pairs supported by Slattery for the Bombers. Heppel, and he gets a free kick, if not a mark. And he gives to Melksham. He had no one running past, so he's going to have to go back and kick. 
Dabs it towards Hurley. Might have had the arms hacked. Umpire let it go. Here's Jetta. Two goals won so far to Hurley tonight. 50 out from the Bombers' goal. Quick kick out by Kerno. Over is about to kick. Now Robinson. That's a clever kick out to Gibbs. He's got some room to move. Kicks down the line. Beautifully done. Mark take by, mark taken by Garlett. He's got a couple of short options. So he was looking for Betts, but couldn't find him on this occasion. McVeigh dives on it. Betts back into the picture. And we'll have a bounce. Slattery good courage to get back there. Didn't mark it, but made sure that Betts didn't. Essendon playing on more after marks than the Blues. I think the good tactics that they've got to move the ball quickly to get it up to Hurley, who's causing real problems. Warnock and Ryder, important ruck contest this. Bombers win well. Her, uh, Heppel, Thornton here with the sit. Brought it down intelligently to Digan. Ball wouldn't bounce for him. But the Blues have it within a long kick of goal. Clearance is really even, 16 to Carlton, 14 to Essendon. As I said, I think that's the key area in this game. Both defences look vulnerable. No Fletcher, no Jamison for Carlton. So it's very even in that area. It's at half forward for the Blues. Quick kick out of the pack by Zaharakis. Henderson will get there first. Stanton up to 12 disposals for Essendon. There's the tackle count. Prismal's got a dozen almost for the Bombers and uh, for Carlton 10 to Judd, 9 to Robinson. Scotland, there's another one for Judd, number 11 for him. Inside 50, big pack fly, Armfield almost snaffled it off the pack, Pears comes to Judd, clever handball to Gibbs who swings onto the right boot and makes no mistake. Bryce Gibbs finishes off Chris Judd's good work. You look at Chris Judd's numbers this year. He's fourth in the AFL in disposals, two in clearances, fourth in contested possessions, two in hardball gets, and he's also number two in the competition, Rob, in goal assists. Yeah, he's had well, two tonight. There's another goal assist, but just the strength at the clearance there. Gets it, gets the ball on, follows up. He follows up his work, and he'll uh, feature again. And another goal assist with the handball out. Now, we mentioned Gibbs. Gibbs had been out of the play in the first quarter. Carlton's put him into the midfield. He's had three touches in eight minutes. Really good experience this for Benny Howlett. Just got pushed off at the stoppage. Chris Judd gave himself a metre or two to set up Bryce Gibbs. The draw in round four was uh, a doer contest. Just 11 goals apiece. This much freer flowing. Playing man on man, and uh, they are just looking to outgun each other. McVeigh takes it wide. Stanton and Scotland. Scotland winning. Run well. Davies. Neat kick. Murphy has the southern wing to himself. Won't be able to go all the way, but he gets it in quickly. Armfield camped under it, but oh, Carlisle back with the flight. Tremendous defensive saving effort for Essendon. Well, I don't know much about Carlisle, Matty. You will, but uh, that says a lot, the courage shown there. Yeah, a lot of talk about Scotty Gumbleton and where he's at in his career. His marking is his strength, and they say he's gone past Scott Gumbleton at the clubs, and uh, Scotty Gumbleton's back playing, but still in the VFL. Carlisle got his chance. Gibbs again. Kicks towards Betts, who's nudged out of the contest, and the mark taken by Hardingham. Just a bit of a look-alike, Matthew. Carlisle, touch of the Danny Jacobs about him. <laughs> there is a bit, and kicks quite simply as well. Is that good or bad? Danny did get better with time, so he had to work on it. Uh, Carlisle as well, he's technically... Uh, he has to work on it, and I know they are, but uh, as I said, he's got a lot to work with and can see him playing centre-half forward, centre-half back for a long time. Almost a bit of Neil Danaher in there too. <laughs> Hope he's half as good as him. Here's Judd, decides to soccer it off the ground. Oh, beautiful pick-up, Garlett to Judd. Oh, might have had a shot at goal, might have been a better option. Too unselfish on that occasion. Throw in in the Blues forward pocket. Beautifully set up, but for once, Judd missing the target. 
He's uh, quite phlegmatic, D doesn't betray any emotion, must have been disappointed with that outcome. Carlton trying to work it clear here and set something up, but they won't. Monfries to Hill, looking to bust through. Support from Zaharakis, Judd stealing again. Kerno, Armfield one-on-one -on -one with Carlisle. Armfield better at ground level, and the Blues slip away again. Chris Judd again was sensational in that stoppage. He's been enormous. His last four or five touches have led to Carlton, which keeps his feet. David Hill goes to ground. He gets in there again. His hands, apart from that last one, have been magnificent. And Arnfield just kept his feet when Carlisle lost them and kicks an important goal. The Carlton forward line's really short and Eddie Betts went to come back on the ground and they've pulled him off and we're now seeing Warnock run down into the forward line and I think that's uh, good coaching by Brett Ratton because they have to have a target that they can kick long to. So he's the bailout man, Warnock. And Chris Judd's had an enormous four or five minutes with his hands. Quarters mentioned it before, he's had eight contested possessions of his 15 disposals and he's resting once again in the forward line, picked up by Hardingham. Fed out by Cruiser to Laidler. He's all wrapped up by Hippel. Thanks, Jerry. Come on. Mm, it was a touch that last goal. May well have been. Picked up by Scotland. Handball smothered by Jetta, but now Tui, the Irishman for Carlton, puts it to half forward. Judd in front. Swooping his arm field again. The man with the dodgy mo has another crack at the goals. <laughs> the what? The man with the dodgy mo. I did spot that earlier. Well, the man with What's the dodgy mo. What's the little mo? finger here? Bend back. Yeah. Hey, Lloyd, how many goals did you kick that were touched? There were a few. Well, it happens. Mm. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Blues looking to stretch the advantage here. Walker getting it out. The Ben Wernock. Got his hands onto it, it wouldn't have been a mark, it hadn't gone 15, it's out of bounds again. And Carlton are pressing hard. Haven't been able to get this lead out beyond the, the roughly two goal advantage. Cruiser bringing it down. Zaharak has taken the ground. So right in front of goal now. The real dominance, 22 inside 50s at Carlton, 10 to Western and Tim, you called it. They are making the most of every entry and they have to because Carlton are dominating the midfield. Cruiser the tap. Simpson. Throw. Advantage paid. Ryder. To Monfries. Who's been pretty quiet so far tonight. Henderson gets the handball from Thornton, puts Carlton back inside 50. Warnock flew high, no mark. Front and centre was Zaharakis. Off to Prismal, he's used the ball well tonight. This time he kicks to a contest. Davey forced to spoil, that's a free kick to Monfries. He's coming up for his eighth touch, off to Hurley. Long ball. And it's a strong mark taken by Hill, who dishes off to McVeigh, who kicks into open space. There's a couple of bombers here. One of them is Jeddah, off the ground, goal. Clever kick. Clever kick, good body work against Zach Tui. Just kept the ball on his preferred side. Well done by Hill to play it on because uh, there was Essendon outnumbered the Blues in this situation. Just kept the Carlton defender away from the footy. Seventh goal from the eleventh entry. Jetta, what sort of a tank has he got, Matty? He's in at uh, this centre bounce. Oh, improved out of sight, and it was the last month of last year where he took himself to a new level, getting 30 disposals, so he is capable of it. Essendon free kick. Melksham to take it. 
the Bombers. Look to get it into the 50 again. And on current indications, that's a 63% chance of a goal. Hurley taking the crumb. Davey mopped up by Tui, the Irishman, to Digan. Under pressure out on the line. Throw in. We spoke of the inexperienced defence of Carlton. Marcus Davies from North Hobart playing his first game for the year. Number 31 picking up Alwyn Davey at the moment. Here's Stanton. Prismal. Melksham. Now Pears. Puts Essendon back inside. 50. Hurley in the front. Posse. Almost. Back to Collier from the impossible angle. Kicks towards goal! Oh! What a cracker! That is from an impossible boss position on the ground. And somehow... Travis Collier has threaded it through for one of the goals of 2011. Thought can't believe it. See this contest, Digan should have punched. He does it, he goes for the grab, and Cramery, his strength, gets the handball out and caught his great call. Something out of nothing from Travis Collier. Carlton by a point. Well, the ongoing narrative of these Carlton-Essendon matches is that one team tends to spook the other. Carlton did it to Essendon in the 99 preliminary final, but Essendon have done it to Carlton on many occasions, and they might be doing it tonight because their hit rate when they get it forward is amazing. And here they go again. Digan this time is at the back, though, to mop up Carlisle's kick. Keeps it wide for Gibbs. Has the line if he needs it, which he might. Has to kick Thornton off the 50. Walker behind Carlisle and the young Essendonian stands tall, brings it down. And the Bombers playing with growing confidence as they just keep absorbing Carlton's scoreboard pressure and working their way back. Zaharakis, spoil from Laidler. Davies running onto it, placing it for Thornton. Now Scotland and Carlton get out of trouble, at least for the moment. Yaron leads Dyson to it. Clean bowled by the bounce, gets it to Davey. Bombers press again from a long way. That was ambitious. And his best mate, Leroy Jetta, stands there with his hands up in the air saying, I was here, you should have used me. Thornton is just a bare 15 metres. The ball now in the hands of Jeremy Laidler. It's long. Essendon had the numbers here. And growing with confidence is Carlisle as he finds pairs. And playing on after a mark. Repeatedly putting pressure on that Carlton defence. Milksham with the football. Kicks out wide. And the mark's taken by Heppel, who took his eye off the ball. He's got it anyway. He sort of was off before he took it, but he's got it. He's right on 50. Mark McVay says, settle down. I reckon you can kick this. So I haven't seen him have too many set shots, Dyson Heppel. Let's see how far he can kick it. He's Warnock kicked. back on the line. Two goals so far in his short but spectacular career. Heppel towards goal. Doesn't make the distance. Scores level at the MCG late in the second quarter. Remarkably, the Bombers still haven't been in front. Carlton have been making the pace all the way but they haven't been able to get away they haven't been able to shake the bombers off and the frustration grows Gibbs goes for some territory and he had one hope the bombers had a couple they only needed one the safe hands of Stuart Cramery and the long kicking boot in the Monfrey's direction right of there too Laidler at the fall, Scotland, Bomber Fords applying pressure, Carlton get away, Armfield, good kick, Garland having to come a long way up here, has Betts circling for him but there's not much forward of him, so I don't know quite where he goes from here, neither does he, he'll try and go as far as he can and hope that Betts can do something, he does! 
Lewis. He's going to run in and kick his fourth goal. This will be interesting because did Eddie give a nudge? Did Eddie give a nudge in the back? That's what I want to see. You've got to give Garlett credit for playing on between half-back and wing. He took the game on. He ran, he bounced, he went through the middle. We'll see Garlett here. So it's a massive play, this. This is about an 80-metre play. But did Eddie infringe? He did use his shoulder. That's just how aggressive the movement was. And we get another look at it from side on. Oh, I didn't think there was a lot in that. But I agree, Garlett. Most blokes would have just gone back behind the mark yeah. and kicked the sideways ball. That's what leg speed can do for you. He made something out of nothing. Warnock, good handball to Robinson, who pumps Carlton back inside 50. Brave stuff from Slattery. Couldn't quite hang on to the mark. Ball spills free. Simpson's at the bottom of all that, and the umpire will bounce. 35 metres out from Carlton's goal at the punt road end. They lead by one straight kick. Cruiser fed it out. Socket off the ground by Walker. Essendon had the numbers deep back. One of them is Pears. A floater. It's a mongrel. Tough one for Scotland to trap. Oh, oh crunch. That's a free kick to Robinson. about that two goals for this season for Mitch Robinson from set shots hard for the tackler though isn't it he oh, sensed yeah. the challenge coming and he went down yeah. and there was yeah. nowhere for Hardingham to go no 7-13 this year Mitch Robinson overall and he's hooked it well that's the big floor in his game seven goals 14 is a very poor return The Blues by seven points. Four and a half to go in the first half. Just been a remarkable pattern here. Carlton uh, opening a two-goal break over and over again, and each time the Bombers coming back. Whose ball is this one going to be? Hill getting a hand pass. Robinson head over the footy again. Hill has another go. Picked off, though, by Simpson. Forced back to Davies. Jetta came at him hard. Tui sweeping it towards Simpson. Hill chopped it off. Carlton fans will want something out of that. They won't get it. Cramery, Zaharakis, Stanton. It's wide open up ahead. This is going to be tough for Carlton. But Dygan, as he has done many times in his debut season, saves the day. Well... That's incorrect disposal by Hill, but it evens out. And good to see Dygan learn from his mistake and put a strong fist on that. Chris Judd's gone AWOL, hasn't touched the football in 13 minutes. Speak of the devil, on cue, gets his first touch for a while. Back to the wing. Cruiser over at it. Here's Slattery, good tackle by Curno. Perfect tackle, should be rewarded it is. And that hurt take pairs, a big hit with... Matty Cruiser, he can't run at the moment. A cork thigh, it looks like. Ed Curto coming up for disposal number six. He's only at 20% efficiency at the moment, and that will go down further. Well, that's the, the flaw in his game, Ed Curto, is his disposal. Works really hard, but has to be better than that. So the Bombers build again. Prismal. Myers, Howlett. Oh, that's untidy. Myers having to go and retrieve it now. Out on the southern wing. Carlton's defence for once with some time to set up. Prismal stabbing it forward. And getting a result here through Cramery. Into the 50. Hurley. A real presence up there. Henderson able to do enough on that occasion. Are they playing Cramery further upfield, Matty? Oh, he just has got a huge tank, Wolsey, and he's... They can't match up on him. They've tried Layla and they've also tried Dygan uh, as well. And they've both struggled on him in, in the air and also on the lead. Bombers dominating the inside 50s the last 10 minutes of this match. You've got another one here. Hill 
with his ample body. Couldn't quite split the pack open. Scotland was good under pressure. Now Gibbs. High ball of the wing. Walker flew high. Couldn't take the mark. It's a uh, big Q meter call there, Q. <laughs> what do you want to play? Well, he got up pretty high. Carlton's footy, Simpson finding Gibbs and Judd and Warnock leaning back, launching it. Slattery bets in an aerial contest. Slattery, good position. More height, did it well, takes it wide. Here's Dyson just behind the wing, kicking well to Hurley. Henderson, though, knocking it away. Simpson just banging and hoping. In vain, straight to Hardingham. It's coming back in the last two minutes. Bombers looking to get back on level terms or at least get within a point before halftime. Zaharakis, eight disposals this quarter. So leading from the front again. Looks for Hurley, just with strength. He's been penalised. Well, that won't please the Bombers supporters given what happened down the other end of the ground. Not happy. Now the Essendon fans. Here's Kerno. That's a better kick as he finds Walker. Target is Warnock. He's got the front position. Beautifully spoiled by Ryder. Throw in. Let's have a look at this Hurley incident. Well, there was less in that than the Eddie Betts one. No doubt. It's just his strength, far too strong for Henderson, should have been paid. Cruiser and Ryder, important ruck contest here in the last minute. Howlett takes Judd down and wins a free kick to the delight of Bomber fans. Zaharakis back to the middle. Cramery again working his way up to midfield. And the Bombers will advance again. Plenty of time to score. Goes for Hurley and he hangs on strongly. He is a real presence. And he puts it inside the 50 wide, but placed it well for Davey. Just inside the line. The angle. Just about the impossible one for the left footer. It's a long way out to try and bend it in from. So he goes away from goal. Prismal touched off his boot. Stanton. Carlton can close. What does the umpire make of that? ball up and two seconds left unless someone gives away a free kick you would think that that would be it 17 goals kicked in the half they only kicked 22 between them when they played that draw in round four clock rolling and they're going to go to half time with the game very much in the balance Carlton clinging to the top four. The Bombers, for the moment, out of the eight, but uh, a win here puts them back in. Warnock and Hill, Murphy didn't have a big influence. Here's Simpson, 150th gamer, cops it in the back. He'll take a free kick. Tim, sorry to interrupt. They're just handing over the paperwork now. I would imagine that his pair's done for the night. We'll confirm that, but they're handing over the paperwork. I reckon Reams will be in and pairs will be done. Simpson wide to Jard. Howlett just could not rattle it away. It's interesting, Carlton have pushed Yaron into the forward line. Judd places it. Cruiser imposed himself physically and in the end took the mark uncontested. Well, this is the chance for uh, Matty Cruiser to get his confidence up against a young fellow who hasn't played very much as a uh, key defender. And pairs off, we're told. It makes it hard for the Bombers. And Cruiser, perhaps the man to exploit that loss. Drives it through for his second goal. James Hurd would be really disappointed with that. There was enough time for Essendon to get some support. Great mark there from 
Chris Judd is too big and strong for Howlett inside the forward 50 there, but watch this kick. Plenty of time for Essendon to get back and support. David Hill not in the right position, and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Matty Cruiser just bumps Carlisle under the footy. Well, Matty, you've been saying Carlton need to have a big target up forward. They've played with a small forward line for a lot of tonight. There's Chris Yaron in picture. Now, they've moved him into the forward line. I think it's a good move. He only had the two touches in the first half playing out of that back pocket. Well, well. went in hard off the line and uh, got into Murphy. He gets up now. He says, OK. And they didn't have it, so should have free kick. No umpire let it go. Judd forces the Blues forward. Cruiser flies again. Oh, boy. So Pears is off. And Cruiser has made the most of that in the opening minute or so, and they're telling him all about it too. Young Carlisle, who's got the job now on Cruiser, and he can go back and line up for his third goal of the match and his second in a matter of a minute. Now, Matty, do they put Michael Hurley into the back line? Oh, I don't think they can afford to for them to win this game of football. Uh, Carlisle, you wouldn't think he'd kick three or four in a half a footy, whereas Michael Hurley can, but this, they may have to make the move if he kicks this. Cruiser has missed. But I think they shouldn't leave him on the last line of defence, Carlisle. Ricky Dyson to do the kicking in. Looks for Hill. Zaharakis went to ground. Cramery having a good night. Spills to Stanton. Now the Bombers work it to the wing, but only as far as... Oh, Diger dropped it. Collier, he kicked that incredible goal in the second quarter is off. Being corralled, gives it back to Remus. Not a bad kick to half forward. Oh, the bounce was horrible for a couple of bombers and that allows Thornton into the picture. That was just bad luck for Essendon. Robinson short and his kick finds Judd. Just have to stretch. Puts it out in front of Henderson. As for Simpson and he collects it low down, brings up a divot. 137th consecutive game, Cade Simpson. Only two Carlton players in history have played more than that. Uninterrupted, Bruce Dool, 162. And Rob, a former Carlton coach, played 142 without interruption. John Nichols. Jim Francis. Jim Francis. Here's Laidler for Armfield. Gee, it's, uh, Craig Bradley must have uh, got a lot on the trot too at different stages. Now Gibbs for Carlton. In the cruiser direction. Carlisle had position then. Cruiser tackled strongly. Carlisle getting it out. Myers giving it to Dyson under the pump. Carlisle and Myers kick smothered. Blues hold it in. Almost brought up a divot with his nose. That 137 games, by the way, Tim, is the current AFL record. Oh, that's the worst boundary throwing we've had all night, Tim. <laughs> you don't Judd. miss a trick. <laughs> Carlton have really started this second half well. I think uh, far better than the Bombers, but they've only put that one goal on the board. It's been a trend in this game. Carlton dominate the first part of a quarter, and Essendon come back really hard. James Hurd, the coach of Essendon, watches on. Lose by 15 points. Says Howlett with the job on Judd. Stanton off to Jeddah. Kick smothered by Judd. Spills to Armfield. Dyson. That's not a bad result. Cramery continues to do well. Coming up for his 16th disposal. Kicks to Remus. Well done by Gibbs. Two is under pressure. Got it out, now Henderson spun out of trouble nicely. Good play by the half backman. Now Henderson a sweeping handball to Murphy. He's got a little one over the top to Betts. And Eddie might be able to go all the way here. Eddie Betts runs inside 50, over the top, gives the handball off and Yaron should go. Great play, Carlton. And that all started with some wonderful play at half back from Lockie Henderson. 
Great effort here from Gibbs as well. Could have easily given away a free kick, but turned his body at the right time in spot on quarters. That was great because Alwyn Davey, one of the better Essendon tacklers, and he brushed straight through him, could have blazed away, but he gave the ball to his key player, Mark Murphy, and good poise there from Eddie Betts. And Yaron, put down your glass, he doesn't miss too many. So Yaron thrown forward, kicks the goal to give Carlton its biggest lead of the night. The Blues have also put Chris Judd down at full forward and Thornton's gone forward. He's been like a yo-yo, back forward, back forward. Red lights, flashing danger for Essendon and more danger here. Judd's going to run into an open goal. And the Blues suddenly lead by 27 points. And I'm not sure what that infringement was, but it's been crucial. You look at the Bombers supporters, they can't believe it. They just gave an easy goal there. The, the midfielders are all looking at each other. Paddy Ryder, Zaharakis, Stanton and Howlett, they're wondering what went on. But Hardingham, watch this. He launches at it. I don't mind it. He backs himself in, but he can't let it out the back. He drops it, and Chris Judd makes him pay. It knew before he even landed, Matthew, he, he did. was in trouble, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> Chris Judd's lit it up in this third quarter. He's had seven touches and he's up to 25 for the match. 13 contested possessions, five clearances, eight tackles. Could be the start of a big week for him. Mm. Here we go. Wow. Be oh, Benny Howlett. So that was a replay a moment ago. Howlett infringing into the centre square. It's a pretty basic one, wasn't it? So the Blues by 27 points as they look to stay in the top four with West Coast breathing down their neck. Armfield has a fresh air. He picked up by Big Warnock. Scrubs one to half forward. Heppel against Yaron. A little toe poke by Yaron. Picked up by Hardingham. To Monfries. Slattery. And he kicks to Ryder. Bombers desperate for a goal right now. Ryder for Melksham. Good delivery. Jack Melksham had that breakout game against Geelong three weeks ago when Essendon off the ropes scored that wonderful victory. Monfries to Collier. Just couldn't quite shrug the tackle. And a very good smother. Robinson on Howlett's kick. Monfries gets it back. Steering ball Howlett. Steering it straight to the veteran. He's Scotland. And what a year he's Scotland's had, Wolsey. Oh, he's been terrific, Matty. He has been sensational for Carlton. And they just need that experience in the back half. As we've mentioned plenty of times, it's a very inexperienced back line. It's the weak link in the Carlton side, I believe. Get Scotland back there and Gibbs at times just to give the uh, younger boys a bit of confidence. Scotland averaging 26 disposals a match this season. He's up to 14 tonight. To half back. The feared number 42. Mm, to Tui. Some blood stains on that jumper. Wasn't the best of kicks to Murphy. Now Scotland will have to clean up the mess. And he does. Back to Murphy. He doubles back. And nice delivery as the mark is taken by. Toomey. It's looking good this third quarter. Mark Murphy, we've made the point a few times. He just didn't look his usual self, and he's had six disposals in this first 12 minutes. That one, not one of his best, but he gets it back from Cruiser and gives it back to Tui. Carlton yes. just working it around patiently in midfield now. Toomey, scything ball, but nothing at the end of it. Carlisle just about marked that. Thornton's gone forward again for the Blues. Simpson a strong tackle on his opposite number six, Monfries. A few bombers that need to lift. Leroy Jetta just five disposals. Alwyn Davy three and uh, Benny Howell at seven as well. Here's Judd to Simpson. Scotland kicks to the tip of the goal square. Is Eddie not going to have a shot at goal? Oh, oh. Willie weaves in and out. Bats has kicked it. He's got five.
Well, he tried his best to dish it off, Rob. He did. He's very unselfish. Looks there. No. Fumble. Looks there. In the end, I better do it myself. He's been magnificent tonight, and I thought the quarter metre could have gone even harder with this one. <laughs> this was phenomenal. Uh, Henry Slattery just got caught ball watching, and Eddie Betts, he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the weekend for the little goal sneak. Stephen Milnate, Eddie Betts equals his best ever with five. McVeigh for Essendon, but it's really getting away from the Bombers now. Two is there to help out Gibbs. The umpire says Gibbs should take the free kick. So, in quick time, in this third quarter, it has got out to 33 points. Gibbs takes it wide for Tui. The Irishman getting a bit of it. Gives to Thornton. Now Yaron. Appreciating the uh, chance to go forward in this quarter, and he delivers to Walker. What's happened, Tim? Carlton's short passes they're bringing each other into the game i said they'd only had uh, the 26 marks in the first half for a team that averages 100 marks a game they were well 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 down on that and there's no doubt they've turned it around in this third quarter and they've just been bringing each other into the game and if we go quarter by quarter carlton's marks you can see there that uh, that is the big swing in the game just keeping possession of the ball through these short passes that's uh, an amazing stat isn't it walker 24 5 from set shots for the year and he curls it home beautifully the blues are romping away Matthew Lewis, let's have a look at some of the stats this quarter to show the domination of the Blues. Just saw the intent early. Disposal 71 to 30, inside 50s 9 to 3, dominating the contested possessions, inside 50s with marks as well. So you saw it, Mark Murphy, Chris Judd set the scene, and look, another centre clearance. The lead's blown out to 39 points, and they're into attack again. Murphy's had a fantastic third term, takes on McVeigh, runs to 45. It is raining Carlton goals. Eight disposals, Mark Murphy. They're dominating the clearance as Bryce Gibbs had a quiet night, but this is a good pass inside 50. Mark Murphy, look at that. He's had a brilliant year and he's had eight disposals to half time and now he's had 10 in the first 17 minutes of this third quarter. Armfield to Gibbs to Thornton. So a real lull <laughs> over the MCG now. They know that uh, the Blues have blown this game apart in the third quarter. Yes, the Bombers' hopes would have been high at halftime. The odds stacked against them tonight, but it was one of those nights in which they looked to be worrying Carlton out of it. Robinson to Armfield, Walker one out here with Carlisle, who made the spoil well. Gee, Mitch Robinson, fantastic at that boundary throw in. He just charged through. He was the player who had the most momentum. So once he took control, they couldn't stop him. Yours. Dyson, ambitious kick. Judd was sought over the top of Rivers. Bad kick, bad kick. There yeah, was. Now Judd into the pockets to Betts. 
Martin. And Edward will go back and shoot for goal number six. And that's the thing about Eddie Betts. He is very, very strong overhead for a little fella. And there's Robinson charging through at that last stoppage. Essendon aren't going to win this game, but percentage becomes a huge factor. We saw St Kilda last night win by 103 points and gain 8%. And that took them above the Sydney Swans, who went on to win today. But now Essendon on a similar percentage to the St Kilda Football Club at the start of this match. They're going to drop a fair bit the way they're going in this third quarter. Now, Eddie Betts, Betts has kicked a bundle of five on several occasions. This for a career-best six goals. It's not a smart kick. wonder what he was after there. Well, there's one Essendon player surrounded by uh, three Carlton. Great achievement there for Eddie Betts. His best six-goal haul there. And as a result of that kick-in, Ricky Dyson gets called to the interchange bench for that kick-in. Stephen Milne's the benchmark, you would have to say, for the uh, small goal sneak forward. But uh, Eddie Betts, one of the very good ones too. Carlton work it around and uh, just always seem to be able to find the outlet now. Robinson again, fisted by Hardingham. Gar Garlett sweeping it towards Murphy. Carlisle getting his hands onto it, but tied up. Stephen Milne has kicked 142 goals from his last 63 games. Betts has 115, including the night from his last uh, 42, uh, from his last um, 61. Here's Garlett. Just hasn't really been able to do it tonight. Armfield with acceleration, of which he has plenty, and he kicks another. and knocked out of the eight as we speak. Uh, this big loss will hurt them percentage-wise too. There's the top eight at the moment, the live ladder. Scintillating goal from Dennis Armfield, his second, and the margin is out to 59 points. McVeigh to Cramery. And quarters, they have not scored in this quarter, and there's only 20 seconds to go. Eight goals, four to zero in this third quarter. Mark's here. Cramery's kick one in the first quarter. It's a raking kick, not quite making the distance. So the Bombers' first score of the quarter comes in the last half minute, trickling off the hands of the pack across the scoreline. A winning quarter of football by Carlton. They've kicked eight goals, four. Without response until that behind. And that is that. The Blues have put the game away. And quarters, the Bombers saved themselves from a scoreless quarter with a behind just before the siren. Yeah, it would have been a, their first scoreless quarter against the Blues, I think, since 1999. Right, tackle. A synergy about that. High tackle on Howlett, gives to Stanton. In fact, against anyone, not only Carlton. Hurley fighting for it hard, hasn't stopped trying. Remus gang tackled to the ground. James Hurd's felt, well, we can't win this game. Let's put our most attacking weapon back in the forward lines. We see James Hurd sit down after that three-quarter time huddle. Hurley back forward, Carlisle at fullback. 
Here is Hurley. Extracts it from the pack to Zaharakis. And good mark taken by Mitch Robinson. Short one to Laidler. And his kick bounces off the chest of Thornton. Carlisle. And a strong grab taken from the man Matthew Lloyd. He was just talking about Michael Hurley. And he can go back and line up for goal number three. And I think if you're an Essendon supporter, you know the game's gone, but you'd like to think, well, we might finish off this last quarter with four or five goals. By putting Hurley up forward, they give themselves a chance to do that. It's been 42 minutes since the Bombers have scored a goal. Only 15 metres out. Deserve better. Did he ask for your number 18, Matty, or did you request that it go to him? He wore number 18 in a lot of his junior games, and uh, I took a real liking to him in the year I played with him, so I offered the number to him, and he said he'd love to wear it, which uh, I'm loving because I'm enjoying watching the legacy roll on. So pushing the back in there, Carlisle's free kick for the Bombers. Howlett loose. Just beyond his range, Ryder in good position. And that's a gimme shot now from right in front. So the Bombers surely will get their first since half time. Yeah, Dogan got caught undersized. He's one blue that hasn't had a great match, just the four disposals. But uh, first goal for the second half for the Bombers. Ryder's second. Diagon not having his best game of the season. He's had a few uncomfortable moments tonight. Right Paddy Ryder gets his second goal for the match. It's 51 points of difference in favour of the Blues. Play on. Play on. All fed out to Murphy, gives it off to Gibbs. And his kick finds Kerno. Back to the run of Murphy once again. He ran his full measure, in fact, a little bit more than his full measure. And umpire Matthew Nichols robbed right onto that one. I think uh, it's the right call. Monfries looks for Stanton. Takes the mark on centre wing. 51 points the margin. It would take something absolutely miraculous for Essendon to make a contest of this. Hurley to a lead from Remus and he'll get a free kick. Davies playing him as closely as he could as Backman must do. Try to go with him on the lead. Perhaps chopping the arm. It's Kyle on the mark there. Getting hold of the bicep, getting into the back. Can you work at any of that artwork, Tim, on Kyle Remus? Can you decipher any of that artwork? No, not too clear on what it's all about. Lloyd, he'll know. He's the expert on Essendon tattoos. What's the bit down the inside of the left forearm, Lloydy? Uh, live for the moment. Well, he might have seized this one. He has with a very good kick. And the Bombers pull back another. David Allard's been a very handy player for Carlton this year. He'll play in the midfield. Uh, he hard in an under type, can also kick a goal. Simpson 
Jams it on the boot. Here's Walker. Now Heppel. We saw Kyle Reamers kick that last goal, and I think it's a big last quarter for him. He started as the sub tonight. He's kicked 16 goals from his nine games, but eight of those came against the Gold Coast. So I think he needs to stand up against quality opposition. Robinson blazing away with the left, with the flight. Murphy couldn't mark it, but it didn't matter. He kicks his second. Murphy just waltzed in there, little pressure, and he's had a big second half, up to 22 disposals now and a couple of goals. Gee's made himself into a good player, strong-bodied player, doesn't get knocked off the line of the ball, can take a mark, very handy around goals, and uh, I think he might be second favourite for the Brownlow behind his captain. Could have been a Brisbane Lions player if he'd chosen so to follow in his dad's footsteps. Decided to go to Carlson. Here he is again. Again, easily past Heppel. So young Heppel's really labouring. Wow. Davy hasn't yeah, really good. had much of a night. Hemmed in here. Uh, handballs to Hardingham. Murphy tries to get it to Cruiser, and Slattery was caught high. He's really tired, Heppel, and the Bombers have been talking for a number of weeks about when is the time to give him a rest. And Mark Murphy, he's got greater leg speed than Heppel, but he does really look like he's struggled yeah. tonight. He's exhausted. I've been watching him closely, Matty. The kid's exhausted, and uh, it may not be a bad thing to give him a week off next week. Interesting to uh, consider the way in which the Rising Star Award is, is judged. Um, it's not votes on games during the season. It is just a... A judgment on the whole year. Here's Robinson for the Blues, but uh, his kicking lets him down again. And he missed the entire 21-metre target that time. And you just wonder if a player like Heppel, who's been so good for 16 weeks, fell away towards the end, whether yeah. it might influence the judges and cost him an award that perhaps he deserves to win. Can I ask you a question, Matthew, about Alwyn Davey? He's been around the system for a while now. For a, a, a small player, he doesn't get enough of the football. He's only got uh, six possessions again tonight. Uh, and I think quarters, that's why he's been in and out of the side for the last 18 months, because he doesn't find enough ball. And so he has to be laying a lot of tackles, and I don't think he's laid enough tonight, just the one or two. So that's why it's putting himself under enormous, enormous pressure, and I think he's got to get far fitter. Campbell comes out to Collier, who kicks into the pocket, and it's a nice delivery to to Hurley. Gee, he's a good player. He is just a super player, reads it well, strong bodied, one grab, and he's and looks to me, Matt, as if there's a little bit of mongrel, and I say that in a nice way about him, and I reckon that just tops the deal off. Well, Kerry was the most intimidating player I ever played against because of his presence, and Michael Hurley plays with so much presence. He believes he belongs out there. Two goals, two tonight for Hurley. Tough angle, but he makes it look easy. Three goals to Hurley. And you still think he's best suited at half-back, Matty? I, I just have seen him at junior level, and I wasn't sure if he's the type of forward who will kick you six or seven big bags, but uh, he's getting better with that. He's still only young, uh, but I suppose... With Hooker and Pears down there, you, maybe you should keep him forward. Getting a shot there of Gus Monfries just okay. coming off. He's, he's had to try to help out in the midfield in the absence of Hocking and Watson. He's only had two kicks. He's had 11 handballs, 12 handballs in fact, but he... The, the pace of the game's been too much for him, I reckon. Just the, it's a fast track out there on the MCG. The ball's been whizzing around. 
and I reckon he's just been caught a little bit behind, so uh, very much a learning game for him. Melksham gives it to Howlett. Bombers again back within 45 points. It's Carlisle, uh, Heppel, and Stanton. And that is a free kick if it's not a mark, and I suspect it is the latter, Mitch Robinson. Putting a case before the umpire, perhaps putting it too strongly. Give Stanton a certain goal. And the Bombers can prune the mad margin back inside 40 points. Let's have a look at how that all came about. Stanton was able to find a bit of space for himself. The umpire perhaps content that the mark had been taken and that it was the contact after that that warranted the 50. I think it's very, very stiff, Mitch Robinson. You're glad to make a contest, aren't you, Rob? I reckon he's unlucky there, yeah. The umpire Simon Overland doesn't miss much, though, quarters. <laughs> Here's Zessenen's next four. And you just wonder whether Job did re-injure his hamstring. Everyone thought he'd be back this week. Wasn't able to get up. So you just hope it was tightness and he can get back in next Sunday to play against Collingwood. Essendon fighting it out. Cutting the margin back to 39. Hill to Monfries to McVeigh to Howland. He got KO'd early, but he's done a great job to get back on the field and play out the game. Prisoner's kick slides off the side of the boot. Laidler fell over his own feet. Tui concedes some ground back to Gibbs. And kicks nicely to Henderson at half back. Pretty fair performance by Henderson. Oh, that was brave from um, Simpson as he stood his ground. Carlisle coming strongly from behind. Here's Murphy running it out, running too hard for most of those around him. Hardingham the spoil, Walker trying to knock it Carlton's way. Heppel getting his hands onto it. Hill now back to Heppel. Murphy's got him. Well, there was no prior opportunity there. And uh, suddenly, sudden death seems to be applying left, right and centre. Well, he's earning him though, Tim, yeah, whether that was there or it wasn't, but he is just in everything as he gives off the handball to Bryce Gibbs. From the 50, you'd have thought the set shot might have been the way to go, but Murphy knew better. Let's see this, Dyson Heppel, he's got plenty of time in slow motion. <laughs> but, uh, and, and the umpires have been red hot on that this round, haven't they? They're, they're going to pick anyone for throwing or what looks like might be a throw. Gibbs gets his second goal. Carlton lead by 45. Matty, what do you think of Lockie Henderson? He's had to fill that full-back role, something he hasn't done before in the absence of Michael Jamison. Definitely worth persevering with. He's been caught out of his depth at times on Jack Revolt, Travis Cloak, Michael Hurley over the last month. But uh, he's one, I think, that you can lock down to be a key position player for a long period of time at Carlton. Murphy has done as he's pleased in the second half. McVeigh, Zaharakis. Judd pressures him. Somehow Zaharakis gets booted to ball back into the middle of the MCG. Here's Digan. Off to Thornton. Shorts it to Armfield. Margin 45. Still half a quarter to go. Armfield got himself into trouble there. Coughs it up to Collier. Hurley. Up in midfield, back to Collier. Not much forward of him, just hasn't got a target. Tried to buy some time. There was none to be bought. Laidler for Cal. To Kerno. He can't see much he likes either. All man on man up ahead, he swings it 
wide in the cruiser direction. Couldn't quite get to the drop. Yaron. See the pace is right out of the game and he delivers to Betts who can go back and line up number seven. And he would be delighted to be able to set his mate up with a little pass like that. He was going to lose those shorts one day. It had to happen. Uh, they're the baggiest shorts in the game, aren't they? And he doesn't wear the elasticised pants underneath. How do you know? Well, I just saw the evidence. Have a look yourself, you'll see it. Eddie Betts, six goals straight for the evening, opens it up and makes it seven. The record is still perfect. Let's have a look at them. Three of them in the opening term. He was everywhere. You know who'll be a little bit worried by this performance? Stephen Milne. <laughs> Absolutely. Stephen Milne, will be, he'll be crowing about his performance. Eddie might beat him. And he's done it in all fashion. He's, you know, he read that one. He's got on the lead. He's crumbed. He's done everything tonight, Eddie Betts. So, seven to Eddie Betts, and that margin nearing that 10 goal point again, Rob. It is. Essendon have they've worked pretty hard in this quarter. They've got to finish off. I know the game's gone, but uh, James Hurd would want nothing less than them to push to the siren. Here's Judd. Set things up for Carlton in the first half. The last time they played, Essendon had Fletcher, Dempsey, Lovett, Murray, Hooker, Winderlich, Watson, Bell Chambers, and also Pears, who's not out there. Carlton still no weight, Jamison, Russell, and Hampson. So the Bombers have just, their depth is really hurting them in this second half. Oh. That, that was just amazing what Chris Judd did then with his strength. He fended off an opponent and was then able to balance and put in the past. Leads the competition with goal assists, and this is another one most likely. He's had six score assists already, Chris Judd. This will be his seventh for the match. Plus 19 contested possessions, Rob. Listen to the tackles. ovation. Seven clearances and 32 disposals for Judd. Well, he'll be very relieved that this game didn't get too exciting <laughs> because that might have created some circumstances away from the football that uh, he wouldn't have wanted to have occurred while he was out doing his duty for his team. Does he get three Brownlow votes tonight, Matty? I think because he did it in the first half. Mark Murphy has come home with a real rush. Eddie Betso, seven straight. Yeah, maybe Eddie, I think, Eddie, tonight, yeah. for sure. Eddie Judd and maybe Mark Murphy, the top three. It's a sight for Carlton fans to enjoy. Crowd of under 75,000. We almost get disappointed about that, but um, Here we go. as we've said, a very cold night and uh, crowds continue to come in tremendous numbers to games such as this. Andrew Walker, 43 goals for the season in 17 games. Prior to this year, he kicked 37 in 103 games. Here go the Blues again. Scotland and Walker, maybe too far out here. Here's a lovely shot for goal. And he puts that in harm's way. Eddie again. There's no free kick. And this should certainly be number eight. And they do love him. Eight to Stephen Milne last night at Eddie Hat Stadium. And it looks like eight to Eddie everywhere on could, the MCG tonight. Could we be looking at double figures, Tim? They've never kicked more than five prior to this. Seven straight. Eight straight to Eddie. This is his night. He's pumped. He is. <laughs> and he set the scene in the first quarter. He had eight disposals. He kicked three goals. He did everything. You could argue whether there was a slight hand in the back, but you don't pay that. Eddie Betts worked Slattery under the football and had the elbow. 
and he's just done everything right. Henry Slatter is quite strong in a one-on-one -on -one contest, and Eddie's been too good. I'll tell you what, there's lots of time left, Rob. We oh, could, could be looking at a tenner here. And he deserves it too. It's a shame some of those Essendon supporters don't stay and watch it. <laughs> oh, that's putting the boots in. <laughs> that is a low blow. What's your best at Carlton, Rob? Ten. Stanton to half forward. Here's Gibbs. I reckon they'll be starting to target any bets now, the, uh, the uh, Blues. They'll know that he's close. Down the line. Here he is again. Betts, one on one. Kept the footy alive. No, he didn't. And I think Hardingham's been the best Essendon defender tonight. Andrew Walker has got three goals, but I thought he's had the better of him. And they've now had to move him on to Eddie Betts. And Eddie going to full forward, he says, I'm the man. <laughs> and he is the man. Here's Davey. Modest number of possessions off to Melksham and Prismal. Melksham again. Back to the former cat, Prismal. Melksham. Bombers just can't get through. And the ricochet is with Robinson. And where's Eddie? Walker's got the sit here. Oh! up with that one unbelievable oh, that's a, just that has to be the best for the year doesn't it Tim <laughs> the crowd is stunned I reckon Essendon supporters <laughs> are cheering this oh, oh that's the best for the year by a mile that was very very high into the black sky now can he finish it he like Betts has a perfect record tough shot Glorious kick. Four straight. Unbelievable. It's got to be the best for the year, doesn't it, Rob? Oh, I think so. I can't think of any better than that. He sits on the shoulders. The hand's nowhere near the back or the neck. Hangs, completes the mark, controls it to the ground. That was genuine hang time, wasn't oh, it? Oh, that is incredible. He marked it on his stomach. <laughs> Oh, that's magnificent. In years to come, he'll just be wishing he didn't have all that tape around his head. Oh. Yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> that's Brett Ratton's uh, response. It was like Mark McCra last year, wasn't it, when he kicked the yeah, dozen? Yeah, that's right. On the defensive side of the centre, although we're trotting forward now, hoping perhaps for a quick release and uh, more havoc for the bomber defence up in the front half. Here goes Robinson. No matter that uh, Carlton lead by 11 goals, getting his head down over the hard ball. Ball up. Straight so up. it's Carlton by 68. Eight goals to Betts. Top four. Secured for the time being, although Carlton have played one more game than uh, Essendon. Here's Stanton. Good centre. Cramery not able to hang on. Laidler pursues him. Cremery fights on. Davey. Laidler paddling it away and the Blues win the exchange. Thornton. Out in front of Gibbs. Jetta closing on him. Gibbs has Davies inside. Is able to use him. And away go the Blues. Where's Eddie? He's not, a, he's not the long option. But the ball might find him. That's what's often happened. Here's Dyson. Judd affecting the steal. Eddie trying to get loose. Big Warnock. Now Garlett over the top, man loose, Murphy wouldn't sit for him, Armfield kicks his third, another one to the Blues. <laughs> Everyone having a piece of the action there, eventually it was Dennis Armfield who came up. with the goal. So the man with the questionable moustache gets his third for the night. Usually see those sort of mows in those low budget films. <laughs> the ones you buy in Canberra, Rob. He's kicked three, and here he is again in the middle of the ground. Fine. 
Rovers. 74 points. It's been a costly night for Essendon. Pears is off injured. Their percentage has gone down by over five. They're out of the eight. And next week, the Bombers face the might of Collingwood. And here's Thornton. Into the middle of the ground, marked by Gala. Kicks to Murphy, takes the mark. Eddie Betts wants it, he's provided the lead, here's Eddie! Oh, he's oh. missed it! He's missed it! Oh. oh, Eddie Betts won't be happy with himself. And the mark's taken at halfback for Eston by Collier. Had too much time to think about it, did Eddie. And that might be his last opportunity, indeed it is. Eight goals though. It is a red letter night for the boys in blue, one of them in particular, Carl over Essendon by 74 points.